We're in Word 2019, Jasper Active Lesson 8, inserting citation sources. So citations are really important um, when you're especially doing English essays and things like that. You want to make sure you're citing the sources that you use to find information. So we're going to practice a little bit. Um, there's great features in Word on the References tab for inserting citations and creating bibliographies and managing your sources, and we're going to touch on all of those. First of all, you want to make sure you have the Tolano Employee Handbook Footnotes document open. So verify up at the top, that's the correct document. We're going to go down to page eight. So I'm going to use my vertical slider here to grab. When I grab it, you're going to see it shows me page one. And as I drag, it will change the pages for me. So go all the way down till I see page eight. There we go. Now we want to go um, to the end of the paragraph under sick days and click at the end and hit enter. So first of all, I'm going to find sick days. There's my paragraph right there. I'm going to click at the end of it and hit the enter key. Now, maybe as you're doing this, maybe you don't have the sources in front of you, but you know you need to go back and put a source in. So we're going to first enter a placeholder. So this will just be uh, a mark in our document. It will show us that there's a placeholder there and we have to go back and put a citation in. So I'm going to go up to the references tab into citations and bibliography, and I'm going to click on insert citation. And this is going to give me a couple of options. So add new source or add new placeholder. I'm going to go ahead and click on add new placeholder. It's going to pop up and it's going to ask what you want this to be titled. Now we can only put in um, single words. It won't let you do spaces or anything like that. For this one, I'm going to put in standards and then I'm going to click OK. And then what you should see now, we have a standards placeholder in there. And it may pop open this researcher box. We can go ahead and close that if, if it does. And step one is done. Mark is answered. For step two, we're going to go to the next page and click on the blank line below the paragraph of text for life insurance. I'm going to scroll down to the next one and find where it says life insurance and then put my cursor down below the paragraph text there. I'm going to go up to the References tab, Citations and Bibliography Group, and I'm going to click on Insert Citation, and this time I'm going to select Add a New Source. When I do that, it's going to open up a dialog box for me, and it's going to give me some prompts to help me create a citation. So we're going to use the instruction panel by clicking on the image there because it wants us to put in this information. And it can get a little tricky to do this to be able to see your pop-up box as well as the example. So move them around if you need to. First of all, I'm going to notice that the type of source is an interview. So I'm going to change the type of source up here to interview. Next in the interviewee section, it says Manulife, comma, Sun Life, comma, City Financial. So I'm going to type that in just as it shows. Manulife, comma, Sun Life, comma, City Financial. And make sure you pay attention to the capitalization. In the next section where it says title, I'm going to put in employee benefits plan. Under interviewer, it says Jeff Chu, year 2012, month September, and then day 20. There we go. So I've matched it all up. You're going to see that it will give you a tag automatically. That's the same. So I can close out of my example. And then I can click OK. Now you're going to see I have a source right here. It comes up depending on how you're doing it. If it's APA or MLA, it will show up how it's supposed to. And if you hover on it, you're going to see it does 
it just selects that. Um, you could click on it and do some things to it if you wanted. All right, but for now, we're going to leave it as is. We're going to mark as answered and go to step three. So for step three, we're actually going to take the source and edit it. So up on the references tab in the citations and bibliography group, I'm going to click on manage sources. Now this is going to show me all of the sources that I currently have in here. Um, on the left, it will show you sources that are available in your master list. And then over on the right, it will show you the current list. So what I've noticed is if I'm working on papers um, that sources that I've used for some papers may show up in here for me. And I, if I'm using that same source for a new paper, I can add those over. For this situation, we're just going to click where it says Manulife, Sun Life, City Financial Employee Benefits Plan. And then we're going to click on the Edit button. And this is going to open up that dialog box again. We're going to click Edit at the right of the interviewee field. So here's interviewee. There's the field. There's the Edit button. I'm going to click on edit and this is going to open up the names that are currently showing under my interviewee section and I want to change this a little bit. So first of all make sure that you've selected under names you've selected what's there then go ahead and click delete and then in the last name field I'm going to click in here I'm going to add these all in separately I'm going to type in Manulife and then click the add button Sun Life Add City Financial, add, and then I'm going to add an additional one, and this is Royal Bank. Then I'll click Add. Once we have all of that in there, we're going to click OK and OK. And then it says that the source exists in my master list and my document. Do I want to update both lists? Yes, I do. So I'm going to click Yes. And then I can click close. So now you're going to see it's going to show up a little bit differently. I want to make sure that all of those um, sources or all the authors or interviewees on that show up in here. I'm going to click mark as answered and go to step four. For step four, we're going to move to the end of the document. And in the blank line before the end note, we're going to insert a page break. So first of all, I'm going to click into my document here. I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut because it's a faster way to get to the end of my document. So I'm going to press and hold control and then tap the end key, E-N-D. So control, end, this jumps me down to the bottom of my document. All right, so in the blank line before the end note, and you're going to see that that's where your cursor actually shows up, we're going to insert a page break. So to do that, we're going to press and hold control and tap the enter key. Now you'll see it moves everything on that was after my cursor onto the next page. And I want to be on that last page. I'm going to type appendix. I'm going to create an appendix here and press enter. And then I'm going to apply heading one style to the word appendix. So I'm just going to click back in it. I'm going to go up to my home tab, into my styles group. Might have to click on my more button to find heading one. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and click on it to apply that here. Now in the blank line between the appendix title and the end note, I'm going to, apply, I'm going to type end notes and apply a heading to style. So down here where I inserted a, that additional page, I'm sorry, not page, space, I'm going to type in end notes. I don't have to move my cursor because it's still in this line on the home tab in the styles group. Click on that more button to find heading three and go ahead and click on it. And you'll see that changes that to a heading three style. Except for I was supposed to do heading two. So let's change that. Heading two. There we go. Again, pay attention to the instructions in Jasper Active. Right? Sometimes you make an assumption about what you're supposed to do and you realize that's not correct. It happens to me too, obviously. It's okay. It happens. It's a matter of going back and making sure we're really paying attention. Let's click mark as answer to go to step five. So for step five, we're going to insert a bibliography. 
So we're going to move our cursor to the beginning of the EndNotes heading and click the References tab. In the Citation and Bibliography group, we're going to click Bibliography, click the Bibliography option in the drop-down list. All right, so first, I'm going to put my cursor right here at the beginning of the word EndNotes. I'm going to go up to my References tab. In the Citations and Bibliography group, I'm going to click the Bibliography icon. And this is going to give me a drop down. And I want to select the Bibliography option. And when you find it, go ahead and click on it. You're going to notice it will add in a bibliography. And there's our reference right there. What you're going to also notice is that your placeholder that you put in here does not get listed. So until we go back and change that citation, it's not going to show up in your bibliography. But for right now, we can mark this as answered and be done.